guys, this is Skirt Ritual, the very first level, and man, I'm really excited about this. So I'm gonna walk you through, guys. So, all right, right here first, we're gonna go over. This is your elixir, which is also kind of a health thing, but you can upgrade to do stuff. Then you got your Molotov, which you can upgrade as well. You got your knife or your melee weapon, and all of those are upgradable. That right there is another weapon for your D-pad if you're on controller, which there shows you the percentage, um, and that also shows you your tokens. Over here, of course, you've got your health and your points or cash. So as you can see, when you first start off, there's a couple, quote, wall guns. You can get a revolver. That's the 1911 you already have, or the rifle. A life token is basically your quick revive. You can carry one of those at a time, uh, and you start with one. So you can't carry more than one, but that's what the stations look like. It's also what the perk stations are going to look like. Where it's circled in red here, that shows you that you have one life token in possession. All right, these are all over the map, guys. These are ammo refill stations, and the price depends on how many times your gun has been upgraded or packed. So you get a variety of enemies coming in on round one, but then as the game progresses, you get new enemies. But the first couple rounds, guys, are pretty easy. Again, this is very similar to Call of Duty Zombies. So as you can see, we're going to go start working on the Easter egg. So Miracle Points, guys, uh, you accrue these every couple rounds, and you can buy different things for your Elixir, Molotov, and Melee Weapon. So far, I think I like Poison and Ice the best, but you get random ones, different games. So as you can see, the first objective, we got to destroy four of these generators. It shows you they're marked on the map, and you can knife them or shoot them. It's the very first thing that you need to do. So I've got a, my friend Darius playing with me. He took care of two of them. But literally, if you can't find them, guys, just look for the, the power lines on the floor and just kind of follow them up. And once you hit all four of those, it's going to unlock some other areas that had electricity on it. But there we see, it always tells you what you need to do up in the corner, get to the underground chamber. So if you're actually trying to do the Easter egg and not just go for high rounds, uh, this is exactly what you need to do. And this is a step-by-step -step guide. So it's a pretty long video, but I tried to not cut out too much There's stuff in editing. Enough. Uh, we made a couple mistakes, and this would have been a three-hour long video. So some of it has been fast-forward and, um, you know, a little bit been cut. But really, guys, at this point, you just want to start making points. Uh, just like Call of Duty Zombies. Um, the more points you have, obviously, you can buy doors, you can uh, get better weapons, you can get perks, you know, and all of that stuff. Um, and we're going to go over all of that stuff. Uh, so we need to head down here to the underground chamber, which is kind of through this mausoleum entrance And as you can see or they call it the graveyard tunnel, which is up at the top middle of your screen That's the area of the map you're at. You're gonna find these journal pages all over the map. Just pick them up I'm not real sure yet what they do because I just kind of started playing this game We got the battle axe the ammo for your 1911 and a different type of rifle now I'm gonna skip all those just because I've learned the gun that I want and it's right coming up in a different room and the 1911 can actually get you through uh, probably up to around eight or nine especially with your Molotov elixir and melee weapon so we're just buying up doors right now and... getting a, a path open as you can see max ammo is max ammo right. you get power drops in the game uh, and I'm gonna go over a few of them but they're very self-explanatory especially if you're a Call of Duty player so this is the main room and this is the first perk we get to stallion juice it increases your movement by up to 24 percent i think that says that's stamina if you're familiar with cod zombies of stamina the great thing about perks in this game is once you buy them you keep them this is your pack a punch which is called supercharger first tier is 5,000. i think that they go up to tier four although um i've not gotten one that high yet you do get packed guns randomly out of the box, which the box in this game is a doghouse with a dog that we'll see later in the game. But right there, I usually grab the, it looks like an AK-47, and there's a pump action shotgun. Uh, if I have some extra funds, I'll grab as a backup. But the AK will get you through for a while because you're going to get uh, kind of a mystery weapon or a wonder weapon uh, on the second cylinder. So here's an icon right here, guys, the, the Grim Reaper Scythe. And that is a sudden death, which is pretty much insta-kill. You know, this is just like, kind of like a non trayar Zombies, where they just renamed everything, except that it's not Call of Duty Zombies. Gameplay is smooth, guys. Um, so every couple of rounds, I haven't figured out the exact 
order, but this big dude right here, his name is Abraham, he comes out and he's a mini boss and he just kind of lurks around, does a smash attack. He's pretty easy to avoid, but kind of a pain, especially when you don't have packed guns yet. But uh, as you can see, well, the instructions are that we need to get four cylinders um, to kind of get out of this place or, you know, finish the Easter egg or whatever. So got the AK, I don't have enough points just to pack. Um, and this was the third time I was playing this map, so I kept looking at the perks because I was trying to figure out which one was speed. Speed has always been my favorite perk, so... Anyway, this is your first step for the first cylinder. You go up to this grate, hold your action button, and then as you can see, there's a circle on the ground. We have to kill fire-breathing zombies, which you see one right there. They explode a big fireball when you shoot them. And uh, we have to kill them close to the grate. The reason that didn't count is because the grate was not all the way open when we killed that one. But you will see a meter pop up right now to your left hand side. You see the white just uh, filled in and it's filling in very fast because we're getting a lot of fire zombies. Now we just got an infinite ammo. My friend went down right there and yeah, you do get a chance to revive. But it is very hard if you're in the middle of reviving and you get hit, it starts you over. So that life token pretty much works Mob of the Dead style where you're a ghost and you can travel back to a revive station and... Uh, kind of sucks because you start on another area of the map there's only a couple of the stations on the map but you can't be killed when you're a ghost um and then you kind of just come back into the game actually that pod right there that we just saw that's the same pod that we came out of at the start of the game so those are the life stations now the life tokens are more like a perk machine on the wall as you can see right there on the left so we're going to come in here pack is very fast you don't have to pick your gun back out of the machine once you put it in so that's a little bit different from cod so don't stand there hitting x wondering you know why you're not grabbing your gun so now we've got the fire burning as you can see uh we are throwing now in uh insides of zombies that start spawning after you fill up the fire and you have to drop off uh 10 of them so both of you can pick them up. They do go in really slowly. All right. So now we just picked up the first cylinder, which opened up after we finished feeding the intestines. So we have got to make our way to the second cylinder, which is right back outside where we came down in that mausoleum. There's a forest with a bunch of scarecrows. Now, guys, this is the craziest one to me. It's not not that much difficulty-wise, but it's crazy because you're in a field of, like, corn stalks. And you can't see anything. All right, so this is the really good one. Half price sale. Anything in the game is half price when that happens. Pack a punch, doors, perks. So if you get one and are able to run and buy some stuff, it's great. We seem to always get them when we were in the middle of a round change or, you know, uh, when things were just so crazy where we couldn't run somewhere fast enough. But if you do catch one, because the second pack a punch is 15 grand, and you're going to see that making money in this is not that easy that symbol right there is your perk symbol and you can have all five perks and when you die you keep the perks and you also uh, uh keep your guns as well if you uh lose a gun and it was packed and you go back and rebuy it then it's packed again so that's great all right so for the second ritual you have to go up to this box and hit the action button and then it's going to tell you that you just have to defend the area uh, and guys, make sure you spend those points every time you get them because you're going to be upgrading four different uh, levels of, you know, epic, legendary, rare for your elixir, molotov, and melee, and it really does make a difference. Uh, so this is telling us, you know, that we have to basically just survive with and fill the essence up. Uh, now you get... God, it looks like a wonder waff if you know Call of Duty, but uh, they call this the Thunderbolt. So uh, the Thunderbolt, afterwards you have to shoot four of the metal scarecrows, which then you'll see them do like a little animation and kind of raise up and electricity will be sparking off them. Again, very BO4 Call of Duty zombies. Uh, this part reminded me uh, of BO4 zombies for some reason. but uh and then we are gonna go um off to the next part of the easter egg once now there's several scarecrows so you know you just shoot shoot them all ammo for this gun is not really that hard to get because you can get out of any of the ammo vending machines and they are pretty giving with max ammos on this game i would say so um you know it's not nearly as strong as the wonder Wall from cod but you can pack a punch it you can upgrade it 
and you know I, I rolled with it for the majority of this game so as you can see we go in here the nice objective we have to destroy these four what do they call them uh, electric cages uh, so it, you know it's better if you have a partner somebody that can kind of watch the zombies because these things actually take a good little bit of uh, hit points before you can destroy them so after you destroy all four of these let's do it uh, and see we're already on round 14 and we knew exactly what to do and where to go by this game so the rounds go by quick and I will say the biggest mistake we made this it game as you're gonna hard. see a little bit later we died in the boss fight with the boss probably at about 20% of his energy left uh, I didn't know this when I was playing but you can get tier 3 tier 2 and tier 4 guns out of the box which is again is a doghouse uh, you know of the boxes in that location whether or not the dog is in the doghouse so unlike the mystery box where it's a light in Call of Duty this is signified by the dog being home in its little doghouse and then it's a uh, it's a mystery gun for like 900 bucks so I watched a video myself about this afterwards and I said that you could get it so after you destroy those you come in here and you just gotta charge the Tesla coils which literally uh, my friend is just running with a zombie you can run with a zombie in this, um, and it takes quite a while for them to die out. They will die out on their own, but I, I want to say you can run around for yeah, at least three or four five. minutes before that happens. So it's pretty easy when you've got somebody else helping, because you don't yeah. have to kill any zombies. You're not collecting souls, or in this game it's called Essence. And this is, I think, is the last step. I think we go and get the cylinder after this. But, um, yeah, pay attention, guys. I'm still learning the locations of where the perks are, where the dog houses are. And every time I've played, I've discovered something new. This game just came out as well. There's that cylinder right there. So then complete it. So now we've got two, and that one is Shock and Load. So that is Electric Cherry. All right. Perk system works very similar to Cold War perks. Every game, uh, after the end of the game, you get some different types of tokens which was different types of crystals in Cold War in which you can permanently upgrade your perks to do more of a percentage damage or do a more of a percentage uh, quick reload you know so that's something I've been trying to work on is just uh, leveling up my perks you know to get so uh, the life token kind of sucks being 5,000 that's a big difference from obviously you know COD zombies work for revive is 500 but Again, that's uh, it's a lot better than Tombstone in the sense of like when you're a ghost, you don't have to fight your way back with a pistol on round 25. Like you can just kind of sail past all the zombies. And usually wherever the light station is, there's not a lot of zombies around because it's way far away from where you're fighting. So as you can see, I went and upgraded my uh, Thunder Gun. And uh, now we gotta just uh, rack up some points. My buddy just died and there's no way I'm reviving him. Guys, if there's this much stuff going on, there's no way you're reviving your teammate because you will get to 90-95% of the bar and if someone bumps you and that's it. The guys with the 1950s diving helmets on, you gotta pay attention to those guys. They shoot out laser beams, but the fire zombies are by far the main thing that kept killing my teammate in this game because they explode. Very similar to some other style zombies in uh, Call of Duty Zombies. Uh, so, you know, again, guys, there, now we've got zombies that are disappearing in front of you and reappearing. Zombies that are shooting electric bolts out. We've got the fire zombies. There is a big variety, and I love it. I think it is super cool. In fact, I would say this is the best standalone round-based zombies game since BO4. Uh, and for their first attempt at it, uh, and the fact that this game has only been out for a couple of weeks... I am really excited to see where this franchise goes. And no, this is not a sponsored video. They didn't pay me to make this. I just happened to download. There's a free demo on Steam if you guys are interested. And uh, I downloaded it and played it. and played it five minutes, and I went ahead and bought the most expensive uh, pack you could buy that comes with all the DLCs and all the skins and all that stuff. So, um, you know, just because uh, I just wanted to have it all. But... You can get the game fairly cheap. I want to say it's like 30 or 40 bucks just for the game alone. And it was on sale uh, a couple days ago when I bought it. Now, by the time you watch this, I don't know if it will be or not. So we're trying to head to the third cylinder. Now, at this point in the game, uh, that right there, um, Elixir of Life, that is Jug. 
so uh, that that gives you some extended life. If you notice oh, now, man. my life bar in the lower left hand screen, uh, El Gringo versus Duddits, uh, my life bar is significantly longer, and that's kind of how Jug works. Also, remember. It shows that I have one life token and that Duddits has zero. So I just want you guys to become familiar with all the icons because it took me a couple games to really figure out what was going on here. You can hold two rifles just like Call of Duty. Uh, they don't have mule cake, at least not on this. You, with the DLCs, you get four different uh, maps. Kind of like, you know, Call of Duty zombies. Take a shot every time I say Call of Duty zombies. So in this part, there are statues in the forest. Um, unfortunately, I didn't shoot, but like one of them, I think it's that one right there. You just have to shoot them. Um, and my buddy was over in the other parts of the forest uh, shooting them as well. And once you shoot those four, there's going to be a cage with a goat in it. Uh, and there are little sigils, uh, four sigils on the cage of the goat. The statues, once you shoot all four of them, and guys, the great thing about this game is it tells you step by step on the top left of what you need to do. Right, right now, find and destroy the statues in the woodlands to rescue the sacrifice. So he's off doing that. I'm grabbing some supplies, and there's the goat right there. I don't know if that's a statue, so I'm shooting it, but then I realize that they have to be lit up. That's what he's explaining to me now. And then once we get all of those done, then one person has to stand know, by the more. cage the like. and the other person has to go interact with the statue to turn them until the sigils on the cage light up so you need all four sigils on the cage to light up it's pretty simple uh i think that doing it solo will probably just be a lot more work because you'll literally have to run back and forth from each statue every time you turn it and i think it's got four or five different uh spots that you can turn the statue to to see if the light is on or not so um you know once you get all four of the the sigils on the cage to the goat will open or the lamb and then uh it's an escort mission from there the good news is that you know i think yeah, we're on around 19 by now uh, not quite as crazy as around 19 in Call of Duty, but it's definitely challenging because we haven't made enough money to really uh, pack our guns appropriately to get this high. So, you know, we're, we're spending entire magazines to down one or two zombies. And obviously there's some heavier zombies like the guys with the diving helmets and stuff that take a lot more hit points to down. So that's me turning the statues. As you can see, this tells when you walk up to it, it's going to ask you to hit the action button. And he's telling me, yes, the light is on, or no, it's not, turn it again, etc., etc. Uh, I would recommend finding the doghouse, guys. I you think that is a huge, face, uh... huge uh, way, because there is not, the, the only complaint I have about this game is there's not really that many guns in the game. So far, we've seen a double barrel sawed off shotgun. You start with a 1911. There's a revolver pistol that's about as effective as 1911. There's maybe one or two semi-auto, um, rifles, like, uh, World War II style. There's this gun, which is some sort of AK variant. There's an MP5 the Thunderbolt gun or whatever. And then there's a bolt action hunting rifle with no scope, but it is very powerful. And I happened to hit the doghouse on my first game and got a level three packed sniper first hit. And I didn't know that it was packed. I just thought it was really, really strong. And I ended up trading it for a wall gun, not realizing that you could get packed guns out of the box. So, you know, I think his guns right now are both single packed and mine are maybe single packed and uh, i'm trying to get the money up to double pack but i would say by around 20 you know i've got three perks showing um that uh you really should focus on trying to find the box and getting at least one tier three or tier four gun it's gonna make things a lot easier especially for the boss fight which you know we're only halfway there at this point but, um, you know, guys, they're pretty plentiful with the drops, so just, you know, get your girls, leave one alive, and train. Just like COD zombies, keep moving. And, uh, you know, there's ammo stations all over the place, so if you run out of ammo, you can easily train towards one. 
and uh, you shouldn't have any any problems. So um, I think right now we're still trying to figure out the statue thing. Like I said, we spent a little bit too long on a couple of things in this video. That's why it's in uh, high speed right now. But the goat doesn't die. That's what I was saying earlier. So once the cage opened, the goat will not move until you get within a certain distance and you have to stay beside the goat for him to move. If you guys remember on Inf Infinite Warfare Shaolin Shuffle, the, the step of the Easter egg where you have to follow the rat around, uh, it's similar to that. Except that in that game, the rat took off and moved and you could lose it if you didn't stay with him. This goat, if you have to run off because you've got a horde of zombies, it'll just stay still and the zombies don't mess with it. So we are still figuring this out. And uh, once the goat comes out, I'm going to take the goat and uh, Duddits is going to... I think he's probably running a zombie out. I really don't know what he's doing. But, alright, so, this, it's saying crack the code, but crack the code is, uh, you know, another part we're going to see. So there's Abraham again, and, and I've probably cut out a couple of times. I mean, I feel like he comes every, maybe four to five rounds. Alright, the cage is open, I have the goat, and Abraham will, you know, you can end the round and he's still up. So he's one of those type of mini bosses that, uh, you know, can just follow you around. Like I said, he's not super difficult to do it. There's another mini boss that I hope we will see here that's kind of more of a pain that starts showing up, I think, after round 20. Um, I don't know what they're called, but if I see it, I'll show you. But uh, those triple points really come in handy, man. Like, when you get those, I would go buck wild, try to rack up as many points as possible. The only thing I haven't found yet, and post in the comments, guys, if you are playing this game, uh, is a way to share money. So, you know, some of the Call of Duties had bank systems or, you know, even elixirs you could use to share money or whatever. But, like, I, 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 it would have been very helpful for us because Dallas went down so many times that uh, if I could have gave him some money just to get, you know, geared back up. Uh, as, as you can see, I'm sitting on 17, and the second pack is 15, but uh, there's still doors. There's a lot of doors on this map, and, you know, I end up running into some I think that I have to buy. But uh, also, there's statues all over the map uh, that look like, like kind of like angels, and if you see one of those guys, make sure you shoot it. You will get some XP. I think I just picked up a life token. I'm working all the way back down to the main area where Pack-A-Punch is. Probably going for my second pack. And as you can see, I am so bad with new maps, guys. I got turned around. So there's the dog right there. He's in the doghouse. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I just didn't know that, you know, I could have, uh, quote, spun the box a few times and possibly have ended up with a really, really good weapon. Because actually, I've used just about every gun on the game. And none, none of them are that bad. There's speed. And that was the last perk that I found. Not the last perk that I bought, but I knew where the other one was. This was the first game I actually found it in. So it's in the uh, the library area. Uh, and definitely you should want to upgrade that with your tokens. That's probably one of the first ones that I would upgrade. I, I think uh, there's Swift Death. I think that's uh, Double Tap. So um, you've got Double Tap, Stamina, uh, Jug, Electric Cherry, and speed that's the only perks that are on this first uh level like i said i don't know if they've got different ones but uh i mean pretty solid picks i'd like to see a mule kick but uh otherwise you know you don't really take uh explosive damage there's no friendly fire um so yeah i think they did a pretty good job of picking out you know the the core perks so, all right, this is saying uh, follow the lamb the church. I'm nowhere near the lamb right now because I'm running off. I was actually trying to find speed and uh, obviously, you know, trying to go spend some money. So the round just flipped on us, got another miracle point, And at this point, we started to get, you know, some red, uh, I mean, uh, some epic and legendary stuff. So, you know, like I said, as you play, I think it's random what it offers you, uh, at least, and that's what it appears to be to me. So each game offers you some different options, but very similar to the way Vanguard worked. If you remember the progression system in Vanguard, where, you know, you got different things you could upgrade uh, depending on each game. 
So, all right, I got the lamb, as you can see, and uh, once I get him, I think he wants to go to a cage that is in the spawn area. Then you have to do another soul uh, gathering, uh, which is, again, called Essence on this. And uh, you're going to see it gets a little crazy. Right now we're on round 22. And I still don't think that I have got uh, a second pack on one of these guns, which is probably insane. So, yeah, these guns were just... I mean, at this point, the enemies are bullet sponges if you just have single pack guns. So, the one thing I haven't figured out, and guys, leave in the comments if you know any of this, what the safeguard means. You pick up a power-up a lot that says safeguard. It'll show a shield at lower middle of the screen above your perks for 30 seconds. And I haven't been able to figure out what that means. So, uh, picking up some ammo here. And like I said, guys, I mean, the good thing about the GOAT is uh, you can take your time with it. You know, don't die trying to get them over there uh it's not really that long of a distance it seemed like it took me a while because i was nowhere near him uh and he goes inside that fireplace right there and then well yeah bam all right so now there's going to be another kind of half circle uh on the ground as you can see and kill enemies within the radius to extract their essence with a, another progress meter. So the issue with this is that you have to be standing in the circle and the zombie has to be in the circle, which again, we saw this in Cold War. We saw this in Shaolin Shuffle. Very similar. This high level, uh, I would recommend training, running through the circle, turning around, and as soon as the zombies start crossing the line, spraying into them, it, get, got, it got crazy in here real quick. There's no way with the guns we had that you could just stand there and hold it down, trying to camp it. Uh, we would have died real quick. So that's what I'm doing is I'm kind of kiting back and forth. Uh, we lucked out, got that infinite ammo there. But even with the infinite ammo, as you can see, my buddy just went down. Uh, there's another doghouse location and as you can see there's a dog um, and I am just running through running through the Badlands trying to do a complete circle around because they got so crazy in there and uh, well we'll circle back I finally went and got speed and uh, I thought that might be a game changer. Unfortunately, with level one speed, which I hadn't upgraded it yet, it's really not that much quicker now. I will say stamina up after one upgrade, you can really tell a difference with that. So stamina is actually really good. Um, but I went and got the rest of my perks, and now I've got five perks. And again, like I said, if you die, you keep your perks. So that is one improvement. Even though the money system is a little bit slow for my taste, uh, at least there's that, where if you spend the money and get the perks, you will continue to keep them, even if you go down. Actually, you know, we didn't go down as much as you would think for it being our third time playing this game. Uh, again, if you are a Call of Duty Zombies player and you know how to always keep moving, um, you know, you'll, you'll do fine. And if you're not a COD Zombies player and you're watching this, Never stand still and always keep moving just like you would behave if zombies were really in the world and chasing you. You would never stand when you would think that they would come up behind you uh, and just stand there and try to go Rambo. I got it. All right, so we just finished up that essence challenge. Finally, just killed Abraham. We gotta grab uh, you. You gotta grab the cylinder. Duddits did it in the game, but the cylinder spawns right on top of where the goat went in uh, the little chimney or whatever. So now for the last cylinder. Uh, and guys, I don't know if you have to do these in this order. Um, when you first start off and you kind of activate the Easter egg. Uh, it shows you the meter locations for all four of them. I'm I'm You're already downstairs when you activate it, so that's why I always go and do the grill first. But basically, you go over to this coffin, and this is right outside of where you first go down in the mausoleum, and you need to grab this lantern. 
Now, it appears to take a place of your gun, and it kind of freaked me out at first, um, and I didn't know what to do, so I switched back to my gun because I heard zombies, and I thought uh, the game was glitched here for a minute, but what it is is when you cycle through your guns, uh, the lantern doesn't come out, but if you hold the cycle button down, like a long hold, kind of similar to, similar to third-person games if you have like a special weapon on your back, then you'll pull the lantern out and you make your way back to this library. You're going to see there's like a little dial puzzle game here. And this is really simple, guys. Again, in solo, it's probably a pain, but having somebody to run the zombies. So there's four symbols and you got to look around for four paintings that when you shine the UV lantern up to shows you a symbol. That right there, guys, that big red, I don't know what to call that. He is um, the mini boss that starts showing up. See, they're after around 20 or 25, and he no, is way more deadly than Abraham. Got, uh, Abraham is the slow, kind of creepy, tall dude walking around that we've seen a few times throughout the game. But uh, So he kind of messed up my puzzle hunting here. Uh, he had respawned in with me. My buddy no, had him outside, and right there is the dog. That's the box I didn't even know. I got $7,900 and I could be hitting it and oh, seeing, you know, me. if I got a better gun. But again, the next time I play it, uh, I will definitely be doing that. So, so I think I saw three locations that the doghouse can be. There possibly might be four. Uh, again, you'll have to learn where they're at. Some more journal pages there. Uh, again, I don't know what those are. If they're just something for an achievement or, or just notes like a lot of games put that crap in. Like, people really care. But, um, again, we're, I'm waiting on my buddy here to gather up a couple of zombies so that I can get the lantern back out and look for these symbols. Now, <clears throat> this took me way longer than it should have because I didn't realize, if you see at the top of the screen where it says Old Library... Um, I'm supposed to be in the living quarters, uh, so make sure that you are in the living quarters, and it's bigger than I thought it was, because it does say old library instead of living quarters up at the top. I was confused as to where I was supposed to be looking, but when you see the symbols on the painting, there's a Roman numeral, one, two, three, or four, and once you put in all of those, uh puzzle codes or whatever you find your last cylinder and you run back to the main room where pack a bunch is and you put all the cylinders in all right the next this is like the second to last step here is you got to stand in this red circle which guys some of this will remind you probably of uh several easter egg steps in different call of duty games tagged or totem comes to mind uh the world war ii game that came out five or six years ago I had this same exact step for uh, actually putting together the Tesla gun. So um, you gotta stand in there and you'll see the progress meter uh, is pretty straightforward. Um, and you're, again, it's a soul thing where you're extracting essences so you need to let the zombies come into the circle with you. And the circle will not move if you're not standing in it. You also need to get it to move around the room. Uh, again, I did this safely by just kind of running through the circle um, and uh, taking out the bigger threats, you know, whatever I had to do to stay alive. Again, guys, if you're not in a hurry trying to get it done, obviously I'm not trying to do a speed run, uh, then take your time and uh, don't put yourself into a situation that you're going to get killed because those $5,000 life tokens start adding up, guys. They really do. If you don't have a life token and both of you die, the game is over. So, um, you know, if your buddy goes down and bleeds out, which, see, Duddish just died, then if I can't revive him and he doesn't have a life token, I tried to revive him there, but you just can't get it done. Uh, then he revives himself, and now he doesn't have a life token. So if I don't revive him, then he bleeds out, and he's basically out of the game until the round changes. Just like... What? Call of Duty. So, um, as you can see, that, that progress meter, I've got this in 200% speed. And it's taken me quite a while to fill up that progress meter just because my guns are not doing anything. So, I can't stress enough how much easier this would have been. Uh, either by spending some more rounds to get money to get that next level of Pack-a-Punch. However, I think the next level of Pack-a-Punch is $30,000. 
Um, and you can see that I'm at 15,600 right now, so that would have taken probably another five to ten rounds to get the money together to do that. But again, I could have hit the box, I just didn't know. So very similar to the first time I tried to do the Cold War Easter egg and I didn't understand about upgrading the colors of your weapon, only the Pack-a-Punch part. Um, you know, I learned in this, and, and it's great when you first start playing a game and you have to learn all those intricacies of how to, you know, get everything right and get your setup and your gear right. But uh, that was the biggest mistake and a huge waste of time. Uh, how many times that you guys probably can't see because of the fast motion that I had to go to the ammo box. Luckily, there's one in the room with us there. But, uh, I mean, I was dumping ammo from that AK. And the Thunderbolt gun, eh. It's just, it's not as good as a Wonder Waffle, let's put it that way. So, you know, uh, I ended up keeping it through that game, but actually the next time I, I attempt to do this, I will probably run a different secondary after that step is done, just because uh, okay. there's some other guns, like I said, the sniper rifle, the bolt action, uh, and maybe even the MP5 that pack a punch a couple times may be better alternatives than that, because that gun doesn't really stun them. Uh, it doesn't stun them like the Wonder Waffle. Um, now you can upgrade your... Uh, whatever those points are, I forgot now. That you get every couple rounds where you can upgrade your elixir and your knife and all that stuff. Uh, you can get some stun type effects. Poison. Uh, you can get some health effects on like let's say your molotov or you, if you throw it on the ground and you or your teammate run through it you you know your health goes up faster but like i said the poison and the uh, ice uh seem to be the most effective damage wise obviously the ice would freeze the regular zombies a little bit and then the poison continued to do damage after you shot them which you know in some cases would just finish them off and uh, go ahead and take care of them as you were running away and reloading or whatever so now guys we're on 29 we just finished that and you get into this ball right here and you see that there are these red rings uh, which it took me a minute to figure this out obviously I'm shooting them and seeing hit points but they keep disappearing so what's happening is at every couple of seconds one closes and another one will open and you're fighting zombies while you're doing this so you know I was uh, shooting two of them and I had my buddy on the other side shooting the other two and then it, when we had like uh, a lower amount of zombies we were just running around to whichever one was open. They took a pretty good amount of uh, shots to damage them but as you can see the one I just passed it was just smoking and uh, once you get all four of those shot uh, we are getting here pretty close to fighting Abraham for the last time and let me tell you Abraham has a hell of a lot of health luckily it does show you a health bar at the top thank you whoever made this game I love when you actually can see your progress it's one thing I did like about Cold War um, but he is a bullet sponge with the guns that we have and uh, I want to say that we probably put 10 minutes worth of ammo into him before we got killed uh, but we were so close and uh, again I think that if just one of us would have had a different tier weapon we would have passed it so here we are getting ready for the fight uh, picking up some ammo and uh, I was going to go up there and pack and then I realized that I needed 30,000 uh, and then all of a sudden, Duddits tells me that he's already down there with Abraham. So, I decided that I wasn't going to stand here and try to make another $3,200. Um, you know, because actually, I can't figure out how much money you make per kill. Uh, because it shows you experience points. Now, I haven't looked around in the settings that much. But as you can see, Abraham's health bar is on the screen. Uh, at the very top, uh, you fight him in the main chamber. Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, the main chamber is where Pack a Bunch is. Um, the reason I can see the health bar is because uh, Duddits is down there with him. So I'm going to load up on some ammo here, which I would suggest you do. I've already got all five of my perks, I've done everything I can do. 
and now I just got to figure out a way to get down there. And once you, the final person, or if you're playing solo, then obviously if you went in there, this already happened. I'm having a hard time finding a, a way to get down there because there's bars up everywhere. And what I, what you'll see here is once I get into this room, his health bar goes away. Now this is, uh, the, what does that say, the broadcast room. Uh, once he comes back in here, now you see his health bar appears, the doors are pretty much closed off. Now, they only send five or six, like, level two zombies in at a time, so you're not having to deal with entire rounds, but the floor, you can see, I didn't realize what was happening. There are landmines that keep appearing on the floor, and if the floor is orange, you take damage while you're standing on it. So I almost died right there at the beginning because, um, you know, I didn't know what was going on. So, as you can see, you know, we are just pumping everything we can into this guy. I mean, you know, the, the so I'm standing right there. You see that red thing? Uh, I thought it was a sigil. That I thought maybe there were sigils that you had to shoot. And uh, I was standing very close to them. I think you may be able to use them against Abraham. Uh, if he's standing by one, you may be able to shoot one. I couldn't tell if that was making a big difference or not. He has a grabbing power during the boss fight that he can literally grab you. And he kind of, kind of like uh, the hook on, uh, oh my god, you know, the robot things from Call of Duty. Completely slipped my mind what they're called. Not the manglers, but the the thing. You guys, if you play Call of Duty Zombies, you know what I'm talking about. The Panzers, the Panzers. He 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 just does it without a hook. So he drags you across. Um, he has way more attacks than he does uh, as you're playing him throughout the game. Again, very similar to Shaolin Shuffle, that you you know fight the Rat King a couple times during the match, and then you know when you get into a very similar shaped arena, which is a sewer, uh, in, in uh, Shaolin Shuffle, that you're kind of just locked in. Luckily, there is an ammo box in the room, and like I said, one of the gates on the side will open up every couple of minutes, and five or six zombies will come in. But the biggest challenge is the closer we got to defeating him the more mines and the more the floor started being orange so you do have a slide movement in this game um, utilize your jump utilize your slide and again guys I can't stress this enough of you know just make sure you got your perks and make sure that you have got two leveled up guns or it I mean to be honest with you I would if I had one tier 4 gun I wouldn't have even needed another gun because there's ammo there and the ammo is relatively cheap. So, I mean, you can just can tell guys by how long this part of the video is. Uh, you know, you you can watch for another three minutes of us dumping ammo into him at regular speed. Uh, and you can kind of watch his power bar, how slow his health bar is going down. Um, and... There's the, the squad of zombies that comes in. Nothing too crazy. You know, uh, I would say, like, a, the, the most dangerous part of this boss fight is absolutely the floor. Because, like, right now, all of a sudden, it just most of the floor turned orange and you're standing. Now, I never saw the middle of the floor turn orange. Uh, so that's a pretty safe spot. Although, the middle is not that big. And if he comes down there, like, right now, what you're seeing... It's not a good place to be because he is huge and he does really wild haymaker attacks and also uh, does a slam attack. Um, and like I said, he keeps dropping mines all around you. So there's many, many ways to get hit, you know. So just keep an eye on your health bar. Uh, the good thing is your elixir and uh, your molotov, you know, they recharge after about... Uh, maybe yeah, 10 seconds uh, I should have been drinking my elixir way more because the elixir does do more than just give you health at this point it gives you like little speed boost or whatever you've selected with your milestone tokens but uh, yeah I, I just threw the Molotov and I believe it said 5 second countdown on that uh, well maybe no it was 15 seconds so, um, you know, utilize those, and one thing that I wasn't doing in this game is you can see that skull in the middle of the screen, lower right above the perks, 
That is your up on the D-pad attack. Now, the two games that we played before this, that D-pad attack was really powerful and really cool. Uh, this game, for some reason, both of us couldn't tell what was happening when we hit the D-pad. I don't know if it was a glitch with the game, or I don't know if the D-pad attack is something that you're actually buying with milestone tokens and we just didn't get a good one. So, um, that's the reason that I'm not using it, because that attack, it takes a good amount to charge up, uh, and it's pretty, it's a pretty good, uh, attack. Uh, it kind of reminds me of, you know, when you're able to use the elixirs, uh, in Call of Duty or something, like, it, it does, like, a, a powerful attack, but you have to charge it up, uh, on a percentage basis. Very similar to Fate and Fortune cards in, uh, Infinite Warfare, where they are... They are charged up by how many kills you get and how much experience points you're getting. So, uh, anyway, guys, so this is uh, this is the boss fight, and like I said, um, I felt kind of weird posting this video given that this is a walkthrough uh, and we died in this boss fight, but I didn't have time to go back and get uh, other footage. So this is step by step of how to get to the boss fight, and you can see the tactic that I'm using of just any season Call of Duty Zombies player. You're just gonna kite, you're gonna train, you're gonna try to stay away from the mines, you're going to keep uh, putting as much ammo into the head of Abraham as possible. Just any zombie game, guys, you know, headshots are always gonna do more damage, uh, and that's true in this game as well. And, you know, just watch out for the floor because, again, I think, actually, if I remember correctly, I ended up dying because I had taken some... Look how low both of our health was right there. Uh, I took damage from the floor, and then there goes Duddits. Uh, I don't know if he's got a revive token or not, but I know that there's no way that I'm getting him up. So, things are getting really really crazy yep that has got up but both of us do not have a life token now so the next person that goes down is going to be out of the game and that was it guys thank you so much guys hope you enjoyed it